know that there are about 206 bones in the human body. We we'll talk about these bones. I am off from Chukudi, and I welcome you to this interesting physical and health education class. For today, we'll be discussing the theme, Basic Human Anatomy and Physiology in Relation to Physical Activities. And our topic of interest is the skeletal system. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to, one, label the main parts of the human skeleton and list the different types of bones. The bone is considered the major component of the skeletal system. For a fact, other components of the skeletal system exist to complement the bone in one or more ways. For example, the ligaments connect bones to bones. Tendons connect bones to muscles. While the cartilage exists to cushion the bones, and the joint is a place where two or more bones meet. It is clear that the bone is an important component of the skeletal system. That's why I want to talk more about it. What is a bone? The bone is a highly calcified rigid structure that makes part of the skeletal system. It is the predominant component of the skeletal system and comes in different shapes and sizes. Being the predominant component of the skeletal system, it is used to classify the skeletal system into two main parts. Let's identify these two main parts. The human skeletal system is divided into two main parts, namely the axia skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Let's talk about the axia skeleton. The axia skeleton is made up of bones which form the axis of the body. By axis, we mean the middle section of the body. The axial skeleton consists of the bones of the head, trunk, and the vertebrae. The axial skeleton is made up of 80 different bones, and these bones are 26 bones of the vertebral column, which are the bones that lead from our tail region to the neck. There are 24 bones of the rib cage, 12 bones on both sides. There is a bone found in the middle of the chest, which is also referred to as the breastbone or the chest bone, but its name is the sternum. Next, there are 22 bones of the skull and 6 bones of the inner ear, 3 bones on both sides, and then one final bone found around the neck region, which is the yoid bone. These are the bones that make up the axia skeleton. The summation of all these bones gives us a total of 80 bones of the axial skeleton. Now let's talk about the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton is simply removing the axial skeleton from the body. The bones that are left make up the appendicular skeleton. This is clearly demonstrated from the image you see on the board. The appendicular skeleton consists of bones that make up the appendages of the body which are the external protruding parts of the body, and they are attached to the axial skeleton. There are 126 bones of the appendicular skeleton, and there are four bones of the shoulder girdle, six bones of the arm and forearm, 54 bones of the hand, two bones of the pelvic girdle, eight bones of the thigh and legs, and 52 bones of the feet and ankles. The summation of all these bones gives us a total of 126 bones. Now let's take a quick look at the diagram of the skeletal system, taking note of some bones of the axia and appendicular skeleton. Remember, the axial skeleton is made of the bones of the core of the body, which are rightly bones within this region. And you identify some bones, which are one, the cranium, which is also the skull. Next is the mandible. Another bone of the axial skeleton of interest is the sternum, which is the bone in the middle of the chest, the ribs, and so on. Next, we identify bones of the appendicular skeleton, which are bones attached to the axial skeleton. And some of them include the hip bone, which is made up of the sacrum and the cosis, the patella, which is the kneecap, the femur, the tibia and fibula, the tarsus, metatarsus and phalanges, 
the bones of the hand, which are the carpus, metacarpus, and phalangin, as well as the bones of the upper arm, which is the humerus, and so on and so forth. Moving forward, let's talk about the different types of bones. It is important to note that different scholars have adopted different ways of classifying bones. Some of them do this by classifying bones based on their location, shape, size, and function. But for the sake of this lesson, we'll classify bones based on their shape. And for this reason, we'll look at the six different types of bones. The six types of bones are the long bones, the short bones, the flat bones, the irregular bones, the sesamoid bones, and the sutural bones. Notice that the first four bones are classified as major bones, while the last two are classified as minor bones. For the sake of this lesson, our interest will be on the major bones, which are the long bones, the short bones, irregular, and the flat bones. First, let's talk about the long bones. Long bones are bones with longer length and shorter width. It is important to note that there are special features that make a bone a long bone, irrespective of its length. And these features are the presence of an epiphysis and a diaphysis. The epiphysis is the two round end of the bone. And in between the epiphysis is the diaphysis, also called a shaft, which determines the length of the bone. Long bones are commonly found in the appendicular skeleton. And common examples include the femur, which is the bone of the thigh, the fibula and tibia, which are bones of the lower leg, the radius and ulna, which are bones of the lower arm, the metacarpals and phalanges, which are bones of the hands, the humerus, which is the bone of the upper arm, and the collar bone which is also referred to as a clavicle. Long bones primarily function to support the weight of the body and contribute to movement. Now let's talk about the short bones. Short bones are bones with about the same length and width. They are commonly described as cube-shaped bones. And common examples include the carpus, which are the wrist bones, the patella, which is the kneecap, and the tassels, which are found in the ankle. The short bones, because of their design, accommodate very little or no movement. For this reason, they contribute to support and stability of the body. Next, let's talk about flat bones. Flat bones, as their name implies, are bones with leveled surfaces. And common examples include the hip bones, the nasal bone, which is the bone of the nose, the sternum, which is the bone in the middle of the chest, the ribs, as well as the scapula, which is the shoulder blade. Flat bones generally provide attachment for muscles and protection for internal organs. Finally, let's talk about irregular bones. Irregular bones are bones which, based on their shape and form, cannot be classified as either a long bone, short bone, flat bone, or sesamoid bone. They generally have complex shapes. And common examples include the hyoid bone, found below the head, the temporal bone, found close to the ear, the jaw bones, which are the maxilla and mandible, that enables chewing, and the bones of the vertebral column, that houses the spinal cord. The irregular bones provide protection for nervous tissues. For example, the spinal cord is protected by the bones of the vertebral column. Also, these bones provide a point of attachment with muscles. For example, the tongue is attached to the hyoid bone found beneath the neck. Now let's go on to take an exercise to see how well you can identify the bones of land so far. In this exercise, we'll be identifying the different bones of the human body. I'll give you some time to look at the bones and try to see if you can identify each bone and name them. Having made an attempt, let's work on this together. First, let's identify the sternum. The sternum is the breast bone. Another flat bone of interest are the ribs. 
which are bones attached to the sternum. Next is the pelvic girdle, which is found around this area. Now let's identify some short bones. First, the carpus. The carpus are the wrist bones, while the tarsus are the bones found around the ankle, while the patella is the kneecap. Moving forward, let's identify some long bones. And first, we'll identify the humerus. The humerus is a bone found in the upper arm, while the radius and ulna are the bones of the lower arm. Next, the phalanges. The phalanges refer to bones of the fingers and bones of the toes. Next, the femur. The femur is a tie bones. And then, the tibia and fibula are bones of the lower limb. And finally, the clavicle, which is also referred to as the collarbone. Now let's identify some irregular bones. And the bones of interest is one, the mandible, which is the bone of the lower jaw, the vertebrae, which are the bones of the spine, and finally the sacrum, which is the bone at the tail end of the spine. Having identified these bones from this exercise, We've come to the end of this class. But before we go, let's take a quick summary of what we've learned so far. First, we learned that based on the arrangement of the bones, the skeletal system is divided into two main parts, namely the axia and the appendicular skeleton. Secondly, we learned that the axial skeleton forms the axis, which is the middle part of the body. It consists of the bones of the head, trunk, and vertebrae. Next, we learned that the appendicular skeleton is made up of bones other than those of the axial skeleton. These are bones that are attached to the bones of the axial skeleton. And finally, we learned that based on shape, there are six types of bone, namely long bone, flat bone, short bone, irregular bone, sesamoid bone, and suture bone. Now, let's move on to our test session to see how much you've learned in today's class. Question 1. Which of these statements is true about the distribution of bones in the human skeletal system? Is it A. There are 90 bones of axial skeleton and 116 bones of the appendicular skeleton. B. There are 80 bones of axial skeleton and 126 bones of the appendicular skeleton. C. There are 126 bones of axial skeleton and 80 bones of the appendicular skeleton. Or D. There are 100 bones of axial skeleton and 106 bones of the appendicular skeleton. The correct answer is option B. There are 80 bones of the axial skeleton and 126 bones of the appendicular skeleton. Question 2. Which of these pairs contain flat bones? Is it A. Humerus and sternum? B. Tarsa and phalanges? C. Scapula and patella? Or D. Sternum and scapula? The correct answer is option D, sternum and scapula. This is where we draw the curtain for this class. I hope you can now identify the different bones of the human skeletal system, as well as mention the different types of bone. We'll meet in my next class. Bye for now.